In today's video, I decided to ask 10 renowned hair transplant surgeons across the US, Europe and India to give me their final take on PRP treatment for hair loss. Each of them has done hundreds of PRPs over a 5-year period on average. That means a cumulative experience of 50 years with PRP treatment. And what you will find out will probably shock you. PRP's very low manufacturing costs make it a no-brainer treatment to offer at any hair transplant or a dermatology practice. So if you want potentially save yourself from $1,000 to $5,000 on a general PRP treatment protocol for hair loss, make sure you stay tuned and find out where this is going to even benefit your particular hair loss situation. And before we start, as always, quick shout out to our sponsor GoFiber. These are hair building fibers you can use to mask any thinning or patchy areas on your scalp to make your hair look thicker and better. So make sure you check out the link in the video description below where you can visit GoFiber, get a free sample of your choice and try them out. See if you like them. So if you are an average person you will probably go to Google and type like PRP for hair loss and you get something like this. PRP can be used as a new therapeutic option for hair loss including androgenetic alopecia and female pattern hair loss either as a monotherapy meaning using it just by itself or an adjuvant to conventional therapy or hair transplantation. Sounds good. It says it's a safe and effective and it seems like you're good to go. If you read further you get something like PRP treatment is a very safe and effective treatment for hair regrowth and hair loss prevention. Unlike other hair loss prevention treatments, PRP therapy is associated with very few side effects, especially when the procedure is performed by a board certified dermatologist. Sounds good, right? So you probably naturally go, okay, how much does it cost? I'm willing to try it, especially if you go to pages like pubmed.com, where you can see so many publications on PRP and hair loss being, you know, put out there on a yearly basis. With close to 200 studies on PRP and hair loss since like 2010, we'll be willing to try it because it definitely seems like it's been tested out. So price-wise, you are looking at $100 per session in countries like Turkey, Croatia, and then it's going to get more and more expensive. If you go to Europe or the United States, it can cost you about $1,000 per session or maybe less than that if you find out somebody cheaper. So it's definitely not so cheap after all. Personally, I have used it as a monotherapy for four times. It was like a part of a bigger package and I can confirm that it did not work for me as a monotherapy and I would definitely suggest just to use it as additional therapy to minoxidil or finasteride. But let's ask the doctors, let's ask 10 renowned hair transplant doctors what they have been seeing with their patients over the last five to 10 years since they have started using PRP and what would they recommend. I'm gonna read through them first and then I'm gonna do an analysis or evaluation at the end. Our first doctor on the list is located in the US. It's Dr. Gary Linko. He also has an awesome YouTube channel. He's a plastic surgeon with a high specialization on hair restoration. This has been his response. For PRP, I almost always use it same day as a transplant for shock loss risk reduction. We also offer it as a standalone for people who want it as a maintenance if they are unable to tolerate finasteride and minoxidil combo or if they want a boost in addition to Finmin if they are not surgical candidates. In my opinion, first-line medical therapy is still Finmin, not PRP, but PRP can be useful in the cases outlined above. Also, the system used is important. Some people try to save on expenses and use a cheap system. We use m and are overall happy with the results. Hope that helps. Second response comes from Dr. Munib Ahmad from the Netherlands, who is solely specialized on hair restoration and FUE. He says, I don't use it because the result of the efficacy of it is not certain. So in my opinion, it's most often too much work and waste of money for too less effect. Number three, Dr. Harald Everson from the Netherlands. He's also specialized on hair restoration, FUE and FUT. We don't use PRP, not anymore, in our clinic for a long time. But back then, finasteride was our number one priority, minoxidil 5% was the second one and PRP was the third. Of course, side effects were less with PRP compared to others. And then I asked him about what were their results with PRP at least, since they're not using it today. Is it because the results were bad? And he said, regular, unpredictable results, painful blood draw some clients, many need to come multiple times back. So that's the reason why he stopped offering it. Doctor number four on our list is Dr. Zarev from Bulgaria. He says, I only use PRP during surgery. So that means he's not using it as a therapy for hair loss prevention, but only as a bonus treatment during hair transplantation for additional healing and regeneration purposes. Number five, Dr. Marvan Saifi from Poland, who is also specialized on FUE and FUT. Not all platelet-rich plasma systems are equal. For the past several years, I have been utilizing the new 
new PRP system, which is a superior centrifuge that produces more concentrated growth factors, ultimately stimulates more stem cells once injected into the scalp. We administer one session four weeks prior to the hair transplant, one session during, and third session six weeks after. We also utilize the topical PRP, whereby it is applied to the scalp once daily for a period of one month or longer. We mix the patient's PRP with a special solution to prolong its viability for up to six months, but it must be stored in the refrigerator at four degrees Celsius. Number six, Dr. Uzgur Ostan from Turkey. As you know, most of our patients come from abroad and stay with us only for a limited time. PRP has two kinds of treatment types. The first is that it is combined with the hair transplantation. This way, we can only perform once during day of surgery, which in my opinion is not very useful and sufficient treatment. When performed sometime before the hair transplant three, four times, or a few months after the hair transplant again three, four times, it can be effective. The second way is in cases other than hair transplant like AGA, androgenetic alopecia, or other types of hair loss as a preventative or healing treatment where three to four sessions are required. Therefore, it is not a treatment we can recommend and perform to our foreign patients, but we inform all of our patients in a detailed way and we do recommend them. We already perform this treatment regularly to our local patients. This is a Turkish clinic. They do utilize it with their Turkish patients who can come and visit the clinic many times a year and their international patients who cannot visit the clinic many times a year. They don't really offer it. The doctor number seven, Dr. Turan from Turkey. We do one PRP right after the surgery and then we recommend them to do three to four sessions on the year one. If they want to continue, we always tell them that they need to do three to four sessions a year. Otherwise, the treatment won't yield any results. We have seen good results on patients that use PRP together with finasteride or dutasteride and minoxidil, but patients that don't want to use medication and they just use PRP and sopalmetal, for example, the hair loss continued progressing if they are below 45 to 50 years of age. Number eight, Dr. Hakan Doganay from Turkey. We have some rules about accepting patients for operation. If we can take successful results without using any medicine or medical treatment, we accept patients. So it is not important for PRP or any other medication to be helpful for hair or not. We we'll let patients to decide if they want to use anything or not after the operation. And then they're saying, yes, we have some good results with PRP on the existing hair that is thinning, but it is temporary, as you know. Number nine, Dr. Pradeep Sethi in India. We do use PRP during hair transplant and the post-surgery after five to six months. We use it also during telogen effluvium for female pattern hair loss in case of post-pregnancy or post-COVID hair loss. We don't believe PRP can give hair growth. The hair transplant growth does not depend on PRP. And number 10, Dr. Bhatti in India. It just doesn't work. <laughs> That's the very short and brief response finasteride, minoxidil, and then PRP if patient demands. So what's the final verdict after all of these responses? Well, to sum it up, three out of 10 surgeons are not using PRP at all because they say it does not work. Four out of 10 surgeons are using PRP during or after surgery. So they utilize it with the surgery. Six out of 10 surgeons I've asked are using PRP as a hair loss prevention treatment unrelated to the surgery, either as an addition to finasteride or minoxidil or as a standalone therapy. Now, the response that stuck out to me the most was the response from Dr. Marvan Saifi in Poland, who is utilizing a topical PRP serum that is essentially your PRP that is mixed with additional ingredients that can make it last in a bottle in your fridge for six months. So you can actually use it every day and apply it topically as you would normally your minoxidil. So this is something new that I have not heard about before. So if you want, I can dig more into this type of treatment solution that includes PRP, but doesn't require you to visit the clinic and have the injections being performed every couple months. Now, personally, I will not do PRP in the future because it's something that I've tried before and it didn't work, at least not as a monotherapy. Now, it's up to you to decide whether you want to pursue PRP or not. And I hope this video gave you a good insight and act as an unbiased source of information where you can make your own opinion about PRP. There are
are definitely some things to PRP as far as not all PRP is done equal, as Dr. Marvin Saifi pointed out, and also things like dual centrifugation method is much better than the single spin method where the concentration of the platelets is more rich because the double spin method gives you a higher concentration of platelets ultimately. If you want, I can do a more extensive video on PRP and how to find the right provider and what to research, what to do, what to ask. Let me know in the comments below. And for more info about my one-on-one -on -one consulting services, check out the link in the video description below where you can learn more about how I can help you out one-on-one -on -one with reversing your hair loss quickly, providing thorough assistance and guidance throughout your hair transplant clinic research and hair transplant doctor choice. Make sure that you avoid all of the mistakes, pitfalls, and maximize your hair transplant success. That was it from me for this video and see you soon in another one.